Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. You recorded it. नमस्कार वेलकम टू कॉमन इंडियन वॉइस गीता पे चर्चा का वक्त फिर से हो गया है आ, स्वामी जी नमस्कार आ, आपका oh, बहुत okay. आभार कि आप वक्त निकाल रहे हम लोगों को समझाने के लिए गीतांजलि जी थैंक यू नमस्कार आप भी वक्त निकालते रहते हैं जब भी मैं बोलती हूँ तब भी आप आते हैं मतलब आई कॉन्ट आई डोंट है आई we are all thankful to you for getting swami ji uh, to speak for us so uh, there is no doubt i will be there whenever you call me <laughs> uh swami ji you said that we will divide uh, this time we will divide the second adhyay into parts and then we will discuss about it so my first question to you is like in the first part we saw that uh, arjun was uh, hesitant he did not want to fight and in this one कृष्ण इज एक्चुअली टॉकिंग टू हिम तो हम आते हैं ना तो हमको दिखता है कि कृष्ण भगवान जो है वो बोल रहे हैं कि नपुंसक मत बनो कायर मत बनो सो so, uh, क्या अर्जुन सच्ची में कायर थे या मोह माया में फंस गए थे कि क्या था ओम वसुदेव सुधम देवम कंस जानु रमर्दनम देवगी परमानंदम कृष्णम वंदे जगदुरु ओम अर्जुनास डिप्रेशन इट वाज अ डिप्रेशन सो इट वाज अ टेंपरेरी स्टेट अ क्लाउड ओवर द सन दैट इज ऑल सो श्री कृष्ण वांट टू रिमूव दैट क्लाउड ऑफ फियर depression sorrow illusions delusions <laughs> so krishna wanted to remove those because krishna knew him very intimately as you have been asking for analogies so krishna stands for our atman and arjuna stands for intelligence atman guides intelligence through viveka wisdom true wisdom to get out of wriggle out of a situation people use many intellectual acrobatics that is not wisdom wisdom is what scriptures say what according to veda whatever is the wisest thing and and the dharmic thing to do at a certain time and the highest level of dharma also not lower levels so arjuna's qualification was for a much higher pedestal so he has to stand there if he vacate that there is a very interesting saying that if you vacate your chair monkey will sit there so oh, arjuna can't vacate that very high pedestal that he has to occupy only he can occupy so that uh, all this things which arjuna is saying which we say arjuna vishada depression arjuna's depression that is only a temporary state he is actually a brave person he has proved he has proven his metal metal many times in the war so krishna knew what arjuna was really even though arjuna is forgetting it he is also he also admits that karpanya dosho bahada swabhava my real nature is being uh, shadowed by fear fear of being called the killer of his own clan etc not a fear of a war or getting hurt <laughs> not a coward but a dharma bhiru a fear for the ethics oh that is a very high level of fear <laughs> isn't it so that was uh, affecting arjuna not uh, ordinary feelings which uh, uh, we may uh, say that arjuna is having it is not like this gita ji 
So Swamiji, uh, what would you say that uh, reading the second chapter of Gita, is it a good um, prescription for um, anybody who's suffering from depression? Um, I did not get the question correctly. There is a... Okay, so uh, I'm repeating. Um, so if we find a person suffering from depression, like most of us have, have some quantity of depression in our lives, but sometimes depression becomes more um, the, yeah, the overpowering uh, feeling. And then at that time, if we read the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita or just Bhagavad Gita in general, is this a good cure for depression? Would it be? Uh, this has been tried, tested and proven. When the Iraqi war was long drawn, American and uh, English uh, soldiers, they were often falling into this stage of depression, despondency. Then this was tested. Some scholar was sent and they were uh, taught lessons of Gita to cure them of depression. And maybe it has helped that uh, that practice continued for a long time. Uh, what I have seen is read through Gita, that is good enough, but uh, listen, listen to someone who is really a credible person about uh, Shastras, who has a credibility about Shastras, that he can explain the Shastras, expound, explain them. Listen to such a person. That's why we feel elated when we read uh, Gita Vyakya, even though we know the meaning and everything. But when we read uh, what Swami Ranganathananda has spoken about it, or what Swami Shivananda has written about it, these are in English, that's why I'm saying. <laughs> or uh, even uh, Gita as it is, it has a purpose, it is written for a purpose, not a general book. Uh, so all these have this uh, effect on us, impact on us, deep impact. It may not be immediate impact, but definitely they will lift us up. Okay. So uh, uh, second Adhyay, uh, my question is, uh, um, Sri Krishna Ji, अर्जुन को शोक के बारे में क्या कहते हैं कि मतलब वो कहते हैं ना कि शोक जो मृत्यु नहीं हुई है उनके लिए नहीं करना जो जिनका होने वाला है वो जरा एक्सप्लेन कर दीजिए प्लीज दैट इज द आत्मा प्रकरण आत्मा प्रकरण इज फ्रॉम 11 इट स्टार्ट्स एंड गोस ऑन फॉर अबाउट सम 20 श्लोकास सो दैट आत्मा प्रकरण स्टार्ट्स फ्रॉम अशोचन नन्न शोचस्तो you are not this body that Krishna wants to say, but instead of that, he says, others are not bodies. So they, they have, those who have died and those who are not uh, still alive, we don't have to sorrow for them. They, what appears to you is the body. And just as we say, it is an appearance. <laughs> so uh, why is sorrow for this appearance, isn't it? Uh, when we talk about it, we say it's an, uh, his uh, uh, shape appeared. That we know. But when we really deal with it, we deal it as if it is not an appearance, it is the uh, individual itself. So that singularity is called Vyashti. In spiritual sense, it is called Vyashti. The singularity which is there in all of us, what is what can we ascribe it to, credit it to? What is that which gives us a singularity? Even if we are in a crowd, we feel we are one. That oneness does not go. From childhood, many times the body has changed itself completely. It is said that in six months, all the cells they are shed and new ones are uh, new ones replace them. So we don't say, but that we are, I am not that 
which was born on this day i am the same i was born on that day we say this when uh, we are 10 when we are 20 when we are 30 when we are 40 when we are 50 and above also we are the same who was born on that day how <laughs> what does we credit it to ascribe it to what is that which is constant factor that oneness ekatva that thing what it can be ascribed to it can be credited to only the only thing which will uh, fit that description fit that expression is something which is not changeable avyayi bhava bhava avyayi chat it uh, sees itself as unchangeable there is only one thing which is unchangeable in the whole nature so our uh, this thing that body is not a permanent state <laughs> it was born it keeps on changing and uh, we don't regret that change do we regret anybody that i am not a small child of age will be horrified to go back into that state when you are helpless about everything so <laughs> nobody regrets the change unless of course they lose the totally their health and strength <laughs> there nobody will regret it even if they are 80 the change oh i have become a very wise senior wise person almost a sage that way they will consider of course if they lose health because of mismanagement of the body that is an another thing nahi <laughs> otherwise they will all be happy that i am being respected by all because i am such a grand old man so these things will uh, arjuna is being reminded that remember your own philosophy your own religion almost that you are a soul you are not the body body changes and the soul is uh, can't be killed can't be cut can't be uh, drowned <laughs> it describes uh, many forms of in which death may come background is the ever shining resplendent uh what is uh, sun like this soul is the this mind has to constantly remember so krishna is just reminding arjuna knows it arjuna has been taught by everybody these things but forgetting dark night of the soul it is called in christian philosophy so not christian philosophy in the western philosophy so it is a dark night of the soul so arjuna is being just woken up gitanjali ji aap um so uh, swami ji my question is um that in uh, general like when we are in society it is expected when somebody passes away even at um, an older age 70 plus 80 plus the the customs are such that people like to wallow in grief they want you if you are related to that person they they are horrified if we don't express extreme grief if we are not um crying and you are not uh, shedding um a tears for a long time they just see you as a discompassionate soul as an unemotional person that's what they'll tell you you have no bhav um you have no love for uh, uh, you know people uh your voice is slightly that's why i put on an earphone <laughs> okay okay so um i'll repeat my question that uh, uh, now it is clear okay uh, so um many times when somebody passes away 
uh, who's near um, to us, a relative or a friend. Uh, the society is such that they expect us to show a lot of grief, to shed tears for many days. And if we don't do that, they see us as a, a stone-hearted person. That's what they'll tell you. Uh, are, are you that uh, disconnected with the world or you do have no love for people? That's the kind of things we get to hear. So what, what is the right response when somebody passes away? Okay, okay. Let me tell you what happened when our father, this body's father passed away. We were just normal. Those who were coming in were coming in with sad, long faces and were immediately cured when they saw us. <laughs> they are conducting in a normal manner, receiving. A, of course, there were no uh, that expression of joy or anything on seeing a distant relative coming after a long time. All that was not skipped, but the normal uh, life was going on. There was no weeping and wailing. So any, uh, even Purana said uh, to just warn us or educate us that if you weep and wail and uh, then all those things, tears and whatever comes out of our mouth and nose, this will be fed to our ancestors whose soul is going to the uh, nether world. So that, is, that is an education part that we should not weep and wail. Be, of course, uh, serious uh, according to the occasion. But then uh, weeping and wailing is unnecessary. What is inevitable has to be endured. And we have to show our courage. And we have to even pacify console those who are not so brave or who are not so well prepared for that event. Isn't it? Whenever there is an event, you have to be prepared for it. And you have to maintain your composer. Calm and composed you should be. That is, if it is true on all other occasions, even in the happy occasions, so it is true on this uh, tragic occasions also. Number one. Number two, our religion teaches us that body is a temporary abode. Navadwara pure dehi naiva kurvanna karayan. A body is acting. It is not the soul which is acting. It is not even prompting the body to act. It doesn't want anything. So a lack of something prompts us to act. When we feel we lack something, abhav, that prompts us to act. Do this, I'll do that, I'll do like this, I'll meet this person, I'll ask this thing. Everything is an action. So that prompting is not there. That prompting is only a movement in the ignorance. Ignorance about the self. Ignorance is ignorance of the self. Normal ignorance may be ignorance uh, about things. But ignorance of the self is avidya. Ignorance about things can be... Uh, it can be corrected. But knowledge, we can gain knowledge. But uh, ignorance of the self, it is a terrible ignorance. And because of that, we are perceiving a shadow. In our memory, we have a person. In our memory, we have a person. It is that memory that is being affected by the absence of the body. This is a death. Death of a person is such an experience to us. That in our memory, some hole is made, some uh, void is there because of absence of that body. We are fearing that void in our memory. We are not weeping, sorrowing for that person. <laughs> uh, he is in good hands after death. He may not have been so uh, in so good hands here. Mm -hmm. There is a so just to 
uh, for a little amusement, we can say in, in, in between all these serious discussion, one person died and through some oracle, his wife contacted. Then he, he was asked, how are you? Oh, fine. Who all are there in heaven? Ah, I am not in heaven. So, <laughs> so this woman was aghast. Eh, what? <laughs> so this thing, uh, what I am saying is, they are in fine hands. Don't worry about them. Just uh, do the respectful things for the body. That is our duty. It is but the void in our memory about which we are sorrowing. Don't take me to be heartless, but <laughs> it is the truth. <laughs> oh. Uh, Swamiji, ye hai yahan pe Sanskrit, Gita Jili ma'am also knows, I don't know Sanskrit very well. But ye jo Hindi mein ye hai, aapko usme se, is karma yog mein ar, aramb ka, arthat beej ka nash nahi hai, aur ulta falswa roop dosh bhi nahi hai, balki is karma yog roop धर्मका थोड़ा सा भी साधन जन्म मृत्यु रूप महान भय से रक्षा कर लेता है इसको अगर आप एक्सप्लेन कर सकते हैं नेहा विक्रम नाशोस्ति हां सत्य वायो न विद्यते स्वल्पम अभ्यस्य योगस्य प्रायदो महदो भयात दिस इज अ वेरी फेमस दिस इज एन इंस्पिरेशन फॉर ऑल योग उपासक दैट यू कंटिन्यूड द साधना यू विल लूज नथिंग बाय डूइंग साधना Ne and you will whatever you have gained it will stay with you eh? even a little bit of this will uh, uh, give you a lot of courage means means it will give you a lot of courage isn't it there is no other way of saving somebody from fear fear's medicine is courage <laughs> if you don't have courage then you have fear so this is an encouragement for all the yoga upasak that they have to continue with their sadhana even if they have to halt in between they don't have to worry but they should do it number one even if there is a break don't worry you can pick up from there i'll tell a personal example 97 i started uh, in the social field after breaking from full time sadhana but continuing with the sadhana at a, a lower phase you can say then phs phase <laughs> so at that uh, lower voltage <laughs> sadhana was continued but then i picked up again the threads in 2018 and it was i was a full full blown yogi then i also i have seen that uh, that which i was in 96 97 i did not have any difficulty in picking up that those threads immediately within a few time a few months it was all back only there was some covering ash or uh, uh, soil you can say so it was removed and everything was shining as uh, before so neha vikrama nashosti there is no reaction also people told you will die if you do such sadhana in the beginning Uh, stages then i told her, let it uh, it is the body which will die isn't it so let it <laughs> that way i just uh, uh, brushed the message but then it did not die though it, there were severe health conditions uh, three times at least that is a natural process in severe sadhana so it, this happens but there is uh, this sadhana has to be done even if it is not so intense as to just to, i have to somehow reach god i will not stop before that even if it is not so intense not caring for anything even our health or our living conditions even if it is not so severe sadhana intense sadhana there has to be sadhana sadhana can be avoided by anybody even education is a sadhana chatranam adhyayanam tapa तो योगा उपासना इस सो स्वामी जी व्हेन यू से साधना 
does it have to be like um, different people do different kind of sadhana like last time we discussed that the sadhana for pitama bhishma it was to keep his oath uh, to stay, of staying with the uh, king whosoever is the king of hastinapur similarly the sadhana for karna was to stay with his friend the sadhana for um, uh, different people can mean different thing uh, like for shri ram the sadhana was to keep the promise of his father um so like can it be any kind of like we can take any sadhana in our life or does it have to be particular sadhana uh guru is the best guide he said so go to a guru ask him and whatever he says do it shankaracharya had four shishyas to three he was giving all the brahma upadesha his vyakhya everything was being taught to them the fourth one anandagiri he was just a servant and when one day anandagiri did not come and shankaracharya did not start the lesson other disciple said okay this stone will be anandagiri he has only that much intelligence or this wall can be considered anandagiri he is so uh what is it called so dumb <laughs> that this wall has as much intelligence as anandagiri so you can start the lesson consider this to be <laughs> they were enjoying their life with shankaracharya so they said like that shankaracharya kept him uh, silent uh, these boys are getting mischievous i will not say anything then <laughs> after some time anandagiri was coming with uh, shankaracharya's clothes everything washed and the uh, utensils uh, everything cleaned and uh, he was coming from the river and uh, he prostrated in front of his guru asked for forgiveness that he was late and he delayed the lessons because he was very confident that the guru will not start the lesson till i reach <laughs> so all this uh, well, and after that when shankara told recite a vedanta kirtan and he started reciting highest levels of vedanta kirtan and all were surprised what happened to this person hmm? <laughs> so that is what i am saying uh, go to a guru shada uh, prashnopanishad also they go with the five wooden log the log means small uh, wooden pieces to the guru tied together saying that our this is our body we offer it in your service it is also a symbol that we uh, light the fire in us we are a small bundle of these five bhudas panja bhuda the five elements we are a small bundle of these five elements light the fire of knowledge in us that is the symbol of the five wooden pieces uh, tied together so they with, uh, with that samidha it is called with that they uh, in hand they go to the guru and in gita also tad vidhi pranipadena pari prashnena sevaya it is said so uh, some guru has to be sought somebody who has the fire a candle which has the fire can light another one a candle can be lit by another candle which has the fire it does not have the fire even if it is much more bigger candle it appears to be but <laughs> it can't light the fire so guru is one who is shrotriyam brahmanishtam akamah and he has uh, uh, conquered all desires and he is well versed in shastras and he is well established in brahma so that is guru so we have to seek a guru to overcome avidya there are gurus who can teach many things and uh, earn through their disciples guruvo bahava sandhi shishya vitta bahara sadguru virala sandhi shishya hrta bahara who can know what the disciple needs and give that exactly not what the, the disciple desires and we should not go to a, a guru with a pre, pre judgment also 
a guru should be like this, like this and like this, then only I will accept him. <laughs> that is not the right of a disciple to, um, they can't scale the guru, eh? they can't measure him, that what is guru. So all these things are have to be considered, so it's a very rare luck to really meet a person who has realized. It's a very rare luck. Uh, Swami ji, I want to ask you one thing. Aapne jo bola na, jo shishya, aapne guru ko judge nahi kar sakte. Magar agar am Swami Vivekanand ko dekhenge, to Swami Vivekanand ne uh, Thakur, Ram Krishna Parmans ka test kiya tha. Accept karne ke baad. Matlab, swa, uh, Swami ji matlab unko bolte te ki tu mera shishya hai. Magar Vivekanand ji unko ah, yes, yes. nahi te. Question is very clear. Still, I will say, don't judge. Vivekananda Narendra came to know that I was wrong. Eh? So, <laughs> it is better not to judge. So, whatever, so what whatever idea I had about Ramashna Paramahamsa, I was totally wrong. Because I was judging a poor Brahmin, not a guru. I can't judge a guru. Physical appearance, social status, all this can be highly deceptive. Even behavior can be highly deceptive. After all, when we compare a guru with something, we are comparing with our own ideas. Understand this. We are not comparing their realization. We may be uh, thinking about studying or observing their knowledge and the way they express it, their oratory skills, all this we can judge. But uh, by this, if you judge a guru, that a Sadhguru means a real one who has realized. A realized uh, realization is a very, very different level. Where the words come back with mind because they can't reach there. जी मैं आज बोलूंगी कि ज़्यादा टाइम नहीं रह गया है आज तो बहुत सवाल और सवाल है मेरे पास I think गीतांजलि जी के पास भी बहुत सवाल है हाँ you are starting something या तो actually time थोड़ा सा I think आपका आंसर कंप्लीट नहीं होगा उसमें जो टाइम बचा है that's why we'll stop here today only I will stop here but only one thing uh, very happy Mahashivaratri to all of Haan. the listeners and viewers. Ji. And uh, may they progress in their sadhana in, in, uh, today and tomorrow. Let them do Om Nam Shivaya Japa and think about Shiva, the Supreme Consciousness in this universe and the father of all the creation. Yes. Madhasta Parvati Devi, Krita Devo Maheshwara, Bhandava Shiva Bhattasta Sudesha. And let me pray for the world welfare also. Om Sarve Bhavandu Sukhinaha, Sarve Sandu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyandu, Makasthi Dukkha Bhag Bhavet, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aapko bhi Shivratri ki hardik shubh kamna hai, Swami ji. Gitanjali ji, aapko bhi kal to fast to rehta hi hai. Aur mujhe bhoat achha lagta hai, Shivratri. I like it very much. पता नहीं एक अलग ही ये होता है चलिए श्रोताओं आप लोगों को भी शुभकामनाएं अच्छा लगा तो लाइक कीजिए शेयर कीजिए सवाल तो आप लोग पूछते नहीं है चलिए हम ही पूछ लिया करेंगे आपके जगह पे सवाल नमस्कार ओम हरिओम